All right, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going over the final spoilers from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Now, uh, there will be some more from the bonus sheets and the big score set, which is part of this set. Um, but today, I believe we got the all the final cards from uh, this set. So let's go over it and see what we got for combos. Um, we've got a Colossal Rattle Worm, which is actually previewed in the first day, but I forgot to include it in that video. Uh, this is a 4-mana 6-5 and has flash as long as you control a desert. And now that we know there actually are quite a few good deserts um, that we can play, <clears throat> this card is quite powerful. It also has Trample and 2 mana to exile it from your graveyard. Search your library for a desert card and put it onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle. So um, I'll be talking about a pretty powerful desert at the end of the video, um, which this goes well with. But it also is pretty good with the surveil lands, a commercial district, for example. If you, uh, for example, Play that on turn one and this was on top of your deck you could just mill it into your graveyard and get a sort of free rampant growth um, effect or anything that sort of discards this card could be useful uh, it's also just really efficient um, big creature and it works well with fight rigging because of the six power so you may be able to build a fight rigging deck that's just mono green um, so we'll kind of see how that plays out. I'll probably build a new fight rigging deck. Um, very powerful effect, and this is a great enabler for it as well. All right, we've got Akul the Unrepentant, which is four mana, so two black, two red for a five five flying trample. And sacrifice three other creatures. You may put a creature card onto the battlefield from your hand, activate only as a sorcery and only once each turn. Uh, the first card I thought about this was Agatha's Soul Cauldron because you can uh, sort of exile it from a graveyard and give all your other creatures that have plus one, plus one counters this ability, uh, which might be really powerful. Um, it could also go in a illicit uh, Masquerade deck or any deck that you want to actively kind of sacrifice your creatures. This is pretty powerful um, because it's a kind of a free sacrifice outlet, essentially, and we don't get that many of those. In standard, and also it puts a giant creature from your hand into play. So um, works really well with any sort of token production, rouse, reinforcements. Um, there's all sorts of tokens in red, uh, and black has a few as well. Um, so you could just kind of build a token deck with this, and just go turn four, play this, and then put in an Atali or whatever from your hand. Um, that would be a pretty powerful play. So I think this got a lot of combo potential. Um, pretty strong card overall, um, and we'll see kind of how it plays out. We've got the Gold Vein Hydra, which is a green and X Hydra, Vigilance, Trample, and Haste, and it enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. When it dies, create a number of tapped treasure tokens equal to its power. So this card is obviously quite good um, and really dependent on how much mana you can put into it. To make it that good. And so we've got kind of Nixos here, which represents a sort of ramp strategy. I see the Green Devotion deck would probably want to play maybe some of these. Uh, it's a really good payoff for having a lot of mana. Very powerful uh, effect, tons of keywords on here. And if it dies, you can get uh, that many treasure tokens back, which can continue to sort of ramp you into what you're looking for. So any sort of ramp strategy, I think, is going to want this. Um, for sure. I mean, it's, it's not even terrible if you just play it on two mana as a 1-1 one, one, um, that gets a treasure when it dies. That's that's okay, but obviously the more mana, the better. And then I also thought about Urborg Scavengers, which cares about keywords, um, because this has a lot of really good ones. And so if it was sort of in your graveyard, if you, even if you played it on two and it died, and you played the Scavengers, you would be able to get Vigilance, Trample, and Haste on the Scavengers attack right away, and then get another... Uh, trigger on the scavengers. Um, there's some other cards in older formats that care about keywords, and so um, that might be a really good inclusion into uh, those decks as well. I'm forgetting the name of the card now. Soul Flare, I believe, um, in Pioneer. So that could be an inclusion in the Soul Flare deck. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you have other uh, ideas for this guy. I just think it's a powerful card is probably going to see uh, play in aggro or ramp or maybe 
some sort of uh, scavenger kind of deck. Okay, we also got Wily Duke, uh, which is a three mana four two with vigilance, and when it becomes a tapped, you gain one life and draw a card. Kind of a funny design here. Um, it is a legend, so it works with Relic of Legends, which is kind of cool. You can just use the a second ability on Relic Legends to tap it and add a mana of any color every turn and draw a card, uh, gain a life every turn uh, after you attack with because it has vigilance. It's kind of funny that the vigilance is, in a sense, a downside to this card because you kind of want to tap it um, to attack. But if you have anything else that allows you to tap it, um, that's pretty powerful. The uh, Seraphic Steed, I believe, um, is a new card which curves really well into this, a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two, uh, with Saddle 4. And so if you want to saddle it on attack on turn 3, it would be... Uh, attacking and you would gain a life draw a card and get an angel right away um, that would be a really nice turn two turn three curve and there's also some shenanigans i think with um, agatha's soul cauldron that you could do with this guy um in older formats you got seeker of Skybreak, uh or like in commander you got that so if you put that underneath uh the soul cauldron and Put the a plus and plus encounter on Wily Duke. You just go infinite and draw your whole deck, uh, gain that many, um, that much life. So that's a pretty sweet combo. And then standard maybe with Forensic Researcher, if you had that underneath the the Soul Cauldron and you put that on the uh, Wily Duke, have put a counter on it, and then you had another creature with a plus one plus one counter on it. Both of them would be able to untap and tap each other infinitely. Um, and then you draw your whole deck and gain that much life. Uh, so that would be pretty powerful. There's some other kind of like tap, untap uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron combos that used to be popular in Standard, but maybe you could play this in that sort of shell and kind of see uh, what happens. But um, yeah, this guy's got a lot of combo potential, either just value, uh, kind of drawing a card every turn, or just going infinite. So pretty cool card. <clears throat> Okay, we've got Annie Joins Up, which is a 4-mana Naya Legendary Enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, it does 5 damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. And if a triggered ability of a legendary creature you control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. So a pan harmonicon effect uh, with a removal spell stapled onto it. So that's pretty, uh, pretty powerful, I would say, and has potential to do some really strong stuff. Um, you got Vojo, which has... Uh, a bunch of triggered abilities. Ward itself is a triggered ability, so it would double that. Um, and then it would double the amount of counters and the card draw you get from Voja. So a really nice curve there. I also thought of the new Roxanne, which would be kind of nice with this. You want, you want turn four, you know, kill your guy. Turn five, play Roxanne. You get two meteorites. Um, you know, maybe kill two things or kill one big thing. And then the t next turn, if you could attack, you'd trigger twice again um so kind of nice to double up those triggers there's probably a bunch of other legendary creatures um that you could use this with let me know in the comments what you think about any joins up any other legendaries i'm missing um that might be really powerful with this but i thought those would are on color and kind of curve into it nicely all right we also have dust animus which is a two mana spirit with flying a two three if you control five or more untapped lands, it enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters and a lifelink counter on it. So pretty cool, you know, works with plus one plus one counter um, stuff and has plot for two. Okay, very important because the curve you could do is on two you could you could plot this, on three you could ramp with Topiary Stomper, and then if you have a, an untapped land on five or the fifth land that would be turn four, you could just play this for free and it would be. Um, Essentially, you'd pay two mana for a, a four or five flying lifelink, which is quite powerful. So maybe sort of a ramp, a green-white ramp deck, or the five-color ramp would want to play this. Um, I thought about Aether Vial could be a way of kind of getting its bonus. Um, if you take up the Aether Vial to, to two, which, you know, a lot of decks in older formats just kind of will go Aether Vial up to two and just kind of keep using it. Um, when you get to five lands, you can just Aether Vial it into play. Um, and get the bonus that way as well. Let me know if there's any other ideas with this guy and how to kind of get the bonus um, 
with it, but you know, having plot is is pretty strong. So um, yeah, I think it's a it's a strong one. Um, you you hardly would ever want to play it without plotting it and getting the bonus. It's really not too efficient in that regard. Um, but a lot of potential to be pretty strong when you do get the bonus. Okay, next up we got, um, which I think might be one of the best lands in this set, which is a common land, uh, Conduit Pylons. It enters battlefield, you surveil one, it taps for a colorless, and one and, and tap to add one mana of any color. So we've seen how powerful surveil lands can be, um, even all the way in modern um, and legacy. Some decks are playing them. And those are the coming to play tapped ones, the new ones we got uh, in the last set. Um, so being able to surveil kind of for free is a really powerful effect. It works really well, obviously, with any deck that would use the graveyard. It also gives you this card selection, which is really great. Um, and this one comes into play untapped. So it's also a desert, um, which can sort of matter for um, that big worm uh, I was talking about in the first slide. So that's a nice little combo if you have that, or you can... You can uh, use a second ability to search out a desert, and you can search out this and then get a surveil off of it. Um, so I think there's a lot of synergy there. But any deck that kind of uses the graveyard, I think, is probably going to run a, maybe a few copies of this, depending on the color requirements of the deck. Um, you know, a reanimator deck uh, with uh, Sheldred's Restoration, uh, Souls of the Lost decks, you know, that care about the number of permanents, you know, your Slime Against Humanity meme decks, like those are going to want these for sure. Um, maybe even like mono red would be playing this in the in this colorless land spot because of um, gives you the card selection and also this like there's a phoenix check on top of your deck is put in the graveyard and get some value there. I don't know. Um, it seems really really powerful card. <clears throat> We've seen this effect on lands before, but it, um, you get a scry. But surveil is just even better because it can fill your graveyard for free essentially. Um, so a really Powerful effect. I expect this to see play in a lot of decks and kind of go in a lot of any combo deck that would want to use the graveyard. <clears throat> we also have Highway Robbery, a common um, two mana sorcery. You may discard a card or sacrifice a land if you do draw two cards. So, kind of a loot effect, uh, but also has plot for two, um, which is pretty cool because you could plot this on two, and then, for example, you could um, play your third land, float the mana. Uh, and then cast it, sacrifice the land. So now you're down the land. And then play Claim Jumper and get its trigger once or twice. Um, that would be pretty strong. Kind of get extra uh, lands out of your deck into play for free, essentially, and draw two cards. Uh, I also thought about Reenact the Crime would be a nice um, combo with this because this lets you discard the card on the turn that you want to reenact. So if you did this on two and then on turn four, discard the card you want to get back, and then reenact it. Um, there's a lot of other uses for this, perhaps. Um, just like any any kind of storm deck may want this. Just because you can kind of go off on that turn, plot it on two, and then the turn that you, you go off, you can just kind of play for free um, and get some card selection and get some more cards on the stack. So I think this has got a lot of uses. Um, let me know in the comments again about this one if you if you think of anything else with Highway Robbery, but I think this is a powerful one. Um, and lastly, we've got the Shepherd of the Clouds. Um, <laughs> this is, I think this is mostly going to be a limited card, but there is some combo potential actually with this guy. He's a 5 mana 4-3. Um, enters the battlefield, return target permanent card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, but it says return the card to the, battle, to the battlefield if you control a mount. So if you had a mount, um, so when you have a mount, there is some infinite combos with this with um, Assimilation Aegis or Lagrella. Both of them let you exile uh, a creature, and then, uh, yep, and then until it, and then when it comes back into play, it kind of blinks it. So essentially, if you had um, if you had either of these three drops in your graveyard, and you play this, and you get and you have a mount as well, it could return it. <clears throat> to play, exile the Shepherd Loss, and then if you have Bart out, you can sacrifice the Aegis or sacrifice the Lagrilla, and uh, then this this would come back into play, and then bring back the Aegis from your graveyard into play, and then you can just repeat that loop infinitely. 
So you'd get infinite plus one plus on counters. On Bart, you'd get infinite um, sort of triggers of creatures entering the battlefield. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like a four card combo essentially, but there is infinite uh, infinite combo potential with it. So just had to point it out. All right, so I think that's it for today. Um, we're going to get some more uh, kind of the, I think it's called the big score bonus sheets. Um, and there's also some some bonus sheets that are going to be legal in historic um, as well. Let me know in the comments if you want me to kind of cover those and any sort of potential combos for those. Um, I'm mostly kind of focusing on standard uh, for these combos, but uh, if you're interested in historic, that can, or timeless as well, those can be relevant. Um, so let me know what we want to see. And thanks for watching. Hope you have an amazing day. This set looks really sweet. Um, we'll see what the big score has for us. Um, but I'm really excited to build a bunch of decks and show them off uh, on the channel. All right. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.